Right guys, I thought I'd do a different video today. As we all know, the gas prices have gone through the roof. In fact, they've almost doubled now. Uh, the, the sort of thing is cubic feet, isn't it? Cubic feet or cubic meters. Um, but it has actually doubled um, in price. And obviously it's going to get very expensive um, to heat and, um, and to, to, for water and stuff like that. Uh, so it's here in the UK, it's kind of got people sort of reopening fireplaces and um, install wood burners and things like that to sort of subsidise um, their heating system. But here, um, I haven't really got that opportunity purely because we've got no chimneys. And uh, the house subsided back in the 90s, I think it was. And um, yeah, and all the chimneys were removed when all the wall shifted and was put in. We can't put anything through the roof because predominantly our house is on the front elevation and we live in a uh, conservation area and they won't allow it. So, um, so yeah, so about a month or so ago, I, a thing came up on my feed, which was um, on Google feed, which was about a Finnish company called, uh, I think it's Polar Nights, and they are producing these commercial sand batteries, which are basically huge, great big silos full of sand, and they use renewable energy that's not in demand, so what, I, when electricity is quite low in demand, and they got this ex excess energy um, that's getting produced by renewables, i.e. wind and solar, it almost pretty much goes to waste. So what they're doing is they're putting them into these sand batteries for a resistor, heats the air, and then they pump the air through the through the sand, um, and they warm this sand up, and you get up to about 600 degrees, I think, um, even 1,000 degrees in some cases. So yeah, so when, when obviously the demand goes back up, or when the wind's not blowing, the sun's not shining, etc., they can then extract this form of energy from the heat from, the, from this sand, which can last months, apparently, um, in this sand. So sand's very good at absorbing heat, and it's very good at holding on to it. So yeah, so they can reuse this heat. I think they pull it out through in the form of air as well, superheated air, and then use it to heat water. Um, because obviously in Finland, they have all these sort of underground water uh, pipes and central heating, and uh, which we don't have here in the UK anyway. So it wouldn't work here in the UK, only on a small sort of basis. So yeah, I kind of thought that was a great idea, but obviously not with any solar panels. So yeah, it's not really gonna work for me, but. However, recently we went to um, we went to Scotland on holiday, and uh, and I've got one of these, um, and this is not what I'm going to be talking about as such, but um, it's just how I came into the process of the thought process, basically how I got to where I am now. Um, but basically, this is a cool, it was called a Kelly kettle, and it basically it's a chamber uh, with a hole that goes right through the middle, and a fire pit at the bottom, and basically you take that off, fill that full of water, um, light a fire in there. And, uh, and then the, obviously heats heats from the bottom and then flames come out through the top um, and heats the water jacket which is around the outside it is a, an amazing bit of kit if you ever go camping and you do a lot of camping this thing is amazing it will out boil any kettle um, and gas it's it's phenomenal um, but obviously in Scotland um, it was a bit colder out there so it kind of got me into thinking well if I filled that full of sand and um and heated the sand around it basically i would have given myself a heater as in the form of a storage heater as in the sand battery so um but obviously i'm not going to do that because we use it for boiling water for drinking and stuff like that and the last thing you want to be doing is putting sand in it but it kind of got me in the thought process so basically i kind of replicated that and and i built this and uh, yeah what this was originally was a 47 liter uh, gas bottle and basically I've cut the top off and, um, and cut the bottom off and put in a, a pipe through the middle, through the center and basically replicated um, pretty much, as you can see, the hole goes right the way through the middle and replicated that Kelly kettle. And um, yeah, what, we, what I did was initially, um, we had the welded, the top welded and then we filled it full of sand and then put the plate on and then welded that on. So the actual, all around that pipe um, is completely full of sand. These are handles. Um, I didn't want to attach um, permanent handles to it because obviously they're gonna get hot. Um, so when the body heats up, it will heat the handles up and then you've got to wear gloves and stuff. These I can just slide in and pick it up. Um, if it's a two-man lift, it's uh, ridiculously heavy. If I'd be honest, I've made this a bit too big. Um, I think it was, what went in there, 75 kilograms of sand went in that. And I think the thing itself, um, empty, 
um, probably weigh 20, possibly even 30, so it's about 100 kilos. But it's doable, it's liftable, and uh, it, it was going to go on a sack barrel anyway and then get transferred that way. So um, so it is, it is liftable, but, but just about. Um, but if I probably did it again, I'd make it slightly smaller. However, um, it's one of those things, if I made it smaller and it wasn't as efficient, I'd probably be thinking, I wish I made it bigger. So at least I've made it bigger. I can work something from that. Eventually, this the whole thing will be insulated. I'm going to try and make this as efficient as I possibly can. It's not the most efficient system um, through heat loss uh, from when I charge in and, and obviously when it's discharging. So what I'm going to do is insulate the outside. I've got a ceramic, um, sort of like a bit like a rock wall, um, and that will go completely around the outside. So when it's charging, um, it's any heat going into it is just staying in there so I'm not losing any heat while I'm charging so yeah and the way I cook it up is it will go onto this <coughs> and that's basically the very bottom of the uh, of the original gas bottle and so what that would do is that will then sit on top of that I've not made any air vents as well I've made some air vents in the doors and stuff like that um, there's things I can play around with it um, but I'll be able to charge it up on that and, and then once it's cooked up, I might actually insulate that. I wasn't going to insulate it originally, but I think I probably will now. I'm trying to, if, I don't really want to be losing too much heat through the firebox either. I want to be sending as much of it up upwards as I can. So yeah, so what happens, it will go. So that will then go on there. I'm hoping I can get this charged in under two hours to give me a good discharge from when I get it in, upstairs. Um, and then it will then go from that obviously come into the house now this was the originally the middle part of the gas bottle <laughs> so it will sit on there you can imagine that the gas bottle will be completely insulated so it won't be able to lose any heat whatsoever from the outside the only place it can lose heat is through this central part um, and I've done that on purpose really because obviously it's a smaller surface area um, and obviously the smaller surface area I've got the more longer I can keep the heat going out of it and that's the theory anyway so when it goes on to here um, this will be indoors and, um, and basically I'm gonna have a fan under there nothing massive probably just a little PC fan and then that will blow air through that central tube and um, and then discharge heat into the house that is the idea so the principle of this is kind of quite good as well in the sense that cold air sinks at the bottom so obviously on the floor in the house that's the coolest air it will then draw that up push it up through the um, through the sand battery and uh, and discharge it through the top in, in the form of hot air or warm air so I'm not don't get me wrong um, I'm not thinking this thing is going to heat my house um, by, by no means um, what this is going to do is work alongside our heating system so or possibly go into a room and then I'll be able to heat a, just one room and then turn the radiators off in there um, but we'll see how, how well it works so today is the first burn so I'm gonna get it onto the um, onto the firebox and then heat it up I'm gonna cook it initially for about an hour in half hour intervals I'll test the um, test what what kind of heat we're getting into it and um, so I do it every half an hour and then I might burn it for a further half an hour because a guy has done this before I, I went on YouTube and had a look and he's done one and it was pretty similar he did it with a gas ball but he spliced in on the side a rocket stove and did it through that he originally made it as a water heater um, he's a scientist I'll, I'll link the description or put it in the comments um, I think it's TNT or something. He's an amazing guy, and uh, and he just just even finding his YouTube channel just sent me down one of those rabbit holes of um, ideas. But I've kind of stuck with what I'm doing and um, and not deviated. However, it did give me a bit of confidence because he managed to get it to about 400 degrees um, down at the bottom, and initially for the first hour I think he got about 40 degrees, and then I think when before he started to discharge it. Um, he got it up to about 80 degrees I'm hoping that if I insulate it it's going to um, I might be able to raise that dramatically and um, but there's only one way to find out in it so today really we're just going to see how what we can get in it and, and, uh, and what kind of variations I can get in there I've got a couple of other ideas um, on ways that I might be able to heat this top chamber um, but we'll we get to that when we get to it so right I'm going to get it on top of the firebox 
and get it lit up and uh, and then see how it goes from there. Right, it's been going for about half an hour now. Um, took a little while to get it to get it heat up, but um, yeah, it's um, it's proper rocking now. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to do a quick temperature check. I'm going to do the uh, fire basket as well, um, just so I know what what we got coming in at the bottom. This is all this is in Fahrenheit, so we're at 11 there. From here, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a gap there, so I'm going to do it from from that end there. So we're at 100. And, I'll take the average from the bottom. I think it's about 191. Or it was that 191. Well, let's say 174. Middle. It's taking a while to warm up this bit. About middle top about a hundred again and my flu is rocking at about two two fourteen isn't it so there's still a lot of heat going into it then which is good news um, I will say a couple of things um, there um, I had I put in a screw there. I filled it full of um, kill drying sand, um, so the sand was already dry when it went in. Um, well, but it was there was some dampness in it as well. So I, I put in obviously a, a, a little screw there just for pressure release, just in case. I didn't know how it was going to re react, um, but I just did it as a as a matter of course. I didn't want to make myself a big sand bomb. And um, yeah. Other than that, it seems to be going okay. First, obviously, the first go. So I did put a grate in there. I might take the grate out. Um, I could get a bit more in there. I don't think it's going to assist me too much. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll try burn without it and see what happens. Um, obviously, you need an extra paper slab um, because that one's cracked already with the heat. And uh, and I didn't take the paint off of the bottom of this part. Um, yeah, and it was smoking like a good. It was the old original paint off of the um, gas cylinder. So yeah, other than that, it's um, yeah, it's rocking quite well. And yeah, excuse the colour of the thing. It, that is high uh, high temperature paint, and uh, <laughs> I originally wanted black, but I didn't really. I only painted it really just to stop it from rusting too much because it's obviously going to be insulated anyway, so you won't really, really see any of it. Um, but. Um, I wanted black, but they had silver there, and it was uh, a fraction of the price, <laughs> so I just got that. But yeah, seems to be going good. So I'm going to test it again in about another half hour and see where we're at from that. Right, so it's done another hour. Um, I'm just going to see where we're at. So got a basket temperature of, now I've just put some fresh wood in, that's gone down a bit, so that's now down to 370, 380, I've got a bottom temperature 190, it was 181, 
middle temperature, 120, it was 170, and the top temperature, strangely, 97, and that's gone down from 107. And the flue temperature, uh, 220, this is in Fahrenheit. So it definitely read up. Uh, it's expecting a bit more than that, to be fair. Um, I don't know. So that's an hour. Um, I might do another half an hour. Uh, yeah. So far, so good. Working well. Um, I suppose really it matters on discharge and see what that gets me at. Good. Right. Um, uh, very success really I'm not so sure um, but I, I put some oak in it um, a while ago and it doesn't seem to be burning um, oak burns really hot but yeah it burns well it burns quite slow uh, and I don't think I'm, I'm, my my results have gone down since I put the oak in basically um, I did have some slightly damp pine but I stopped using that and uh, I initially started using pine and I was getting a, a far better firebox reading um, and my firebox reading has gone down so I'm now at um, this is a cheap gun this so we're at about 425 um, originally we was at we was in the 470s with a pine um, I've got loads of pine I've got, I've got about um, five cubic meters of wood um, from when we renovated the house so I've got plenty of wood um, the bottom temperature see now that was way up on that I really don't know about this I, had, I was reading about 240 earlier on and um, and I mean minutes ago there's no way it could have dropped by that much so we're at 209 uh, bottom One thirty thirty five, let's say, uh, middle and top is a hundred and twenty, and my flu temperature is let's say two thirty. Um, inside the uh, flu, as I know. Even that's gone down, that was in the 500s earlier. Well, there you go, that's I can't see because it's mine. Yeah, so he's in the 500s. So I'm going to get it off and put it onto the uh, thing, and then we'll see how long it takes to cool from there. Okay, so we've got it off, it's now standing on its stand. Um, it's going to do it. I'm going to do the underside for the cooling part of it. Uh, 452 underneath. Two, let's say 240 at the bottom. 140 middle. 120 at the top. And I'm going to do it now from the inside of the flue because it's a bit that matters. So it's also got a good temperature in there. Let's say about, it just varies all over the place. Let's go by the max, it was 390, well let's say 390 um, inside. And uh, yeah, it's fairly bung out to me. So the thing is, absolutely, you can't touch it. It's, um, it's really hot all the way around, and uh, so I'm probably just going to let it go to ambient and see how long that takes. So let's say it's 20 to two now. So uh, I'll see how it goes to, to pretty much ambient. Yeah, kind of a, a bit, bit varied really. I put that oak in, and, and I wish I didn't. Um, I think what next when I do it um, next time, I'm going to insulate it. I think that's going to help. Um, it's quite breezy today, so I just kept getting varying. And then this 
this thermometer thing's very cheap um, and it just get varying all the time and I think once it's insulated it'll be able to um, hold the heat better and and build up the heat better right guys excuse the background noise we've got church bells and we've got a guy with an angle grinder who's been going at it all afternoon although I cannot complain because obviously in order to create this I did this over about three weekends on and off and uh, yeah and I think I was driving my um, my neighbours crazy with the angle grinding and stuff I was doing so we're now what time are we at 4.40 so we've had three hours on this thing and um, and it is really still really too too hot to touch I can put my hand on it but I can't put it on there for long so it's a bit like a hot radiator really um, which is quite um, yeah which is has sort of inspired me a bit now to thinking that it, it, it will work because <laughs> I, I kind of I kind of admit I kind of got to uh, when I took it off uh, I was a bit despondent with it um, purely on the basis that um, I didn't get it to the temperature that I was hoping I'd get it to but there's no doubt about it it has proper held on to that heat and uh, consider I'm outside and it's actually bare bones um, it's not insulated or anything so it's losing heat um, from every surface that it's got um, it's doing pretty well um, it's obviously dropped quite a lot we we'll do a temperature check now and um, so at the bottom we're now at 82 so it has lost a lot um, I did it just now bizarrely uh, which was always lower that was in the 90s early just now so it's yeah so it's 90 um, which is weird because the middle uh, the bottom was obviously hot the middle was cooler uh, and the top was cooler still um, and the top is now at 71 72 um, and we're not doing the outside of the chimney because that won't give us any because it's basically on um, thing but the inside is the bit that matters because obviously once this is all fully insulated um, the only air the only heat that can escape predominantly will be from the middle and obviously we'll have in the fan there um, so inside we are at 136 which is not bad really I think I mean this is in Fahrenheit and real realistically I should be working on Celsius I don't know why I started doing it on Fahrenheit because um, I work to Celsius well on temp surface temperatures like if I'm you know we're doing the cooking or whatever we do it to Fahrenheit but air temperature uh, in the house is always done with Celsius so generally we we normally set our um, our thermostat for our heating at between sort of 17, 18, 19 uh, degrees. So if I set it to Celsius on here now, uh, which I might on my when, on my next video when we do this, I'm going to do it on just Celsius. And uh, sorry if that confuses anybody. Um, we're working at about 54, 55, aren't we? Yep, 55. Um, and obviously I'm not getting in there. Um, I can only get to probably about here on it. And obviously we know that's the coolest part hottest parts in the middle at the minute still um, so yeah that's kind of quite encouraging really um, considering the amount of effort I've put into this and thought process and stuff obviously um, so when I you know when I'm calling say 50 58 60 60 degrees um, obviously when I'm blowing through there it doesn't mean I'm gonna get probably gonna get 60 uh, degrees Celsius of air coming out through the top um, it's going to be marginally cooler than that, so, um, but it's going to be a damn sight warmer than the air going in. So it will carry on be warming the air, and we're at what did I say? Was that three hours? So I might check it again in four hours, and we just as interest to see what we're at, um, and see. I, I really can't put my hand on that for long. It's it's proper hot. So um, so yeah. So I'm going to get it insulated tomorrow, and then I'll do another video, um, and hopefully have it installed, and we we put it in the house. It's it's not going to look pretty. This thing, it's going to be. I think I'm just going to put this um, this insulation around the outside, and then um, I'm thinking really 
of putting just ordinary kitchen foil on the outside, a few good few layers, um, and then putting the chicken wire over the top of that, um, just to give it a bit of protection from when I'm moving it on the sack barrel. Um, so it is going to look pretty rough and ready, but it, I'm, a, I'm a functional man. It, if it functions, it's fine. It's not ever going to be a piece of furniture in the house. It's just going to be something to warm the house, basically. So, um, so yeah, quite encouraged by that. And um, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to want to see um, see another video, other video, and see how we progress with this thing. Um, I'm finding it quite interesting. And um, yeah, and if you've got any ideas on it, any way that I can improve it, or even if you don't be too harsh on me, if you think I'm wasting my time, I, I do realise this is a lot of effort. Um, but it, that doesn't bother me. Effort doesn't bother me. It's um, for me, it's it's free heat, and that's how I look at it. Um, and you know, for the effort of doing this, uh, you know, getting indoors and um, and setting it up. Um, is nothing. It means nothing to me. If it's free heat, free heat, and uh, and it will heat a room or keep my energy costs down um, through this time, then then so be it. I don't care. Um, Saves doing press ups, doesn't it? <laughs> and, uh, so uh, so yeah. So if you got any 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 ideas, then then yeah, please please leave a message and uh, yeah, and hopefully I'll uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Goodbye.